Today, our guest is Beach Buddies undergraduate peer educator, Stephanie. She is a second year pre-social work major with a sociology minor and has interest in activism for spreading awareness of mental health and LGBTQIA rights. Being part of Beach Buddies, she has been able to turn her passion of helping first-generation students into work by helping students through their college journey. You can also catch Stephanie on her podcast, Beach Buddy Corner, where she discusses everything from election stress, love languages, and midterm stress, giving students a glimpse into what it can be like to discuss subjects in the Beach Buddies peer mentoring sessions. Today, we will be discussing what mindfulness is, how it may look different to each person, the benefits, and how we have been trying to practice it through a pandemic. Let's dive in. So I'm very excited to have Stephanie here to join us, a little Project Ocean and Beach Buddy collaboration. Again, thank you so much for being here, Stephanie. Thank you so much for having me. I mean, I think this is going to be fun to have this conversation with you guys. Let's go ahead and dive in. Like Sinead said, what what is mindfulness to us? Honestly, I don't think I have like concrete definition of what mindfulness is. I I think when like when I hear mindfulness, I think of like thinking about yourself, being mindful of yourself, being mindful of your mental health. That's what I think when I think of mindfulness. It may be a wrong definition, but that's what I think when I hear that word. Stephanie, I'm the exact same way. I was contemplating this this morning. I was like, what is mindfulness? And like to me, all I could think of was like the word just like being present. And like literally saying mindful with what you're doing. (laughs) That's me. I completely agree. I always, whenever someone asks like, oh, like, what do you think mindfulness is? I always end up using mindfulness as part of the definition. I'm like, you know, when you're mindful of what you're doing. (laughs) Um, But yeah, I definitely feel like uh, more specifically, it's, it's that mind body connection and it can span with everything you do, or you can really start practicing specific types of mindfulness. Um, For me, during this pandemic, it's really just been trying to focus on that mind-body connection and, and trying to really understand what my body's feeling and why it's feeling that way. So that's kind of like what I've been trying to focus on in the mindfulness realm this pandemic personally I've been trying to do like mindful morning so everything I'm just like so intentional like even pouring the hot water in my tea I'm like this is mindfulness at least to me (laughs) definitely like during the pandemic you kind of just tend to focus on other things like what's going out in the world and like focusing on the news what I do is just like I just put on my really slow playlist in the morning you know trying to relax or if I really want to listen to a song I don't know if you guys ever have this thing where you like have this song stuck in your head and you just like want to replay and replay it and I just let myself replay it because I'm like I just really want to listen to the song and I really don't care if I listen to it like a hundred times like I just do this like do things that that I just want to do like without really caring because you just don't want to think about anybody else but yourself if it makes you happy you know you could just do it yeah Stephanie listen yeah. To the song. <laughs> yeah listen to that song however many times you want as long as it's benefiting you in the end like that's what it's all about yeah I I agree there are definitely um things that I do kind of like how Sinead was saying in the morning just trying to be really really mindful um And I really like that type of practice is just deciding, like if you're starting to get into mindfulness and starting to like attempt to practice mindfulness more often, I mean, being mindful is scheduling time to be mindful and really, really present in the moment. So Sinead has her mornings and, you know, is really, really mindful during that time. And I think that's a really good practice is just to schedule the time that you're going to be mindful and really pay attention and set those intentions is I think that's really important I think like one also one important thing to bring up is like people who may not have time fitting mindfulness into their schedules or like because they don't work from home or they're not home all the time because you know there's a lot of people even during the pandemic they still have to go drive to their workplace I I think you could also do it in your car focus on driving like don't worry about like oh I'm gonna be late like to work like don't worry about that just like be present in driving be 
yeah. just focus on that car in front of you and I think that's also one way you could just put it into your schedule without like messing up your like other like like yeah like stacking schedule. almost you mm-hmm. stack yeah. like you're doing something normally and then you're okay well when I'm doing this normally throughout my schedule I'm also going to dedicate that to being a mindful practice and I think driving is a good example too there's a lot of times I mean it's happened to me I can't remember the exact name of it I learned it in a social psychology class but like you'll be driving from point a to point b and you'll get to your destination and you're like I don't even remember actually driving did I stop at all the stoplights like did I you know where you just get lost in the drive so making sure that like okay Today, every single time I enter my car, I'm going to try to be as mindful as possible because I think a lot of people, when they think of mindfulness, they think of very classic, you're sitting cross-legged, you're practicing a meditation and, you know, you're, you're not always doing that when you're being mindful. So I think it's really important to make the distinction that like meditation and mindfulness, although they relate, they're not always the same. Yeah, I think that's a really good point to bring up. Like, yes, you can sit cross-legged and meditate if you want to. But sometimes for me, mindfulness would be like, I'm going to sing this song and I'm going to try and hit all those notes. And even if I don't hit it, I'm happy. I'm warm inside. I'm feeling good. I was like, like Stephanie, when she's talking about music, Every morning at like 8 a.m. when I sign in for Project Ocean, I have like this good morning playlist and it has like the Beatles and like Michael Buble and stuff I wouldn't listen to in the car. But in the morning, it just feels so good. And I'm just so bliss. And it just like helps me get through the day and be so intentional with everything. Like I got my work music. Okay, then I'll make my list now. And then I'll attack everything. Like I'll take on the day because I started out my morning caring for myself and feeling good. (laughs) I love that. I seriously love that. And I think that's like another really important thing that doesn't, doesn't get talked a lot when we talk about meditation and mindfulness is that, you know, if you have a going to bed routine, you can also make different routines for different aspects of your life. Like you said, you have a specific playlist that you start right when you start work that puts you in the headspace to start that part of your day and that in itself is a mindfulness practice yeah and honestly if you asked me years ago and someone said oh is this mindfulness I wouldn't have thought it to be but the way it helps me like makes it mindful to me (laughs) it's just like I think it's like breaking down the stigma that mindfulness only looks one way like I personally don't really I think like I don't really like yoga so but I listen to music or I write in my journal or you know I do whatever that makes me happy it's mindful like like you said it's mindful to me it's helping me relax and stay present I I'm interested what okay both of you what are your top three mindfulness practices I'll just like piggyback off of what I was saying playing that music in the morning it just gets me in a better space but then also something that has really helped me be like mindful is skincare like I know that's basic but it helps. Like, I don't wash my face. I'm gonna be honest, y'all. I'm sometimes greasy. When I wash my face, I feel like a new woman. Like, I just like, I'm like, I'm so clean. My skin looks so good. Even if it doesn't, I don't care. I'll wash my face. So like, just doing that, I'm like in a different space for me. I'm like, I'm ready to tackle the day in a different way. And then lastly, most like intentional is when I work out like weightlifting, you have to be intentional with that. You just can't be like, you know, I'm sorry for those listening. I'm swinging my arms around. Um, (laughs) Just be like throwing that around. You're going to hurt yourself. So I'm just so intentional. And then it just like makes me feel so good. And after I just feel so accomplished and ready for like everything else the day brings. So I really like do that when I need to feel good. I love that. Those are really good ones. What about you, Stephanie? So I think like my first one is listening to music. I can listen to just about anything. I If I'm feeding it, I would just put like my record player because I have a lot of records. So I just play those. Oh, we're throwing it back to record players. I like it. Yes. <laughs> it's, it's a lot of Beatles um, records. I'm a big Beatles fan. So and I just got this new Queen album, too. So I play that. Oh, album. yes. I love that. Or I write. But writing, it has to be like very specific. I get really bad like writer's block. 
if I need to be like in this place like creatively like okay I feel like writing about this today and if the words don't come out in my journal okay they don't come out I don't really force it fun fact before I changed my major to social work I was a communications major but I realized that I was it was really hard for me to write like on a deadline and I rather just do it as a hobby and then I write just about anything like poems um song lyrics at one point I wrote about song lyrics stories um, it really just depends and I could go on for like months not writing but you know it's fun and only I read it um, another one is reading I really love fiction like romance books <laughs> <laughs> I just like write like about like fiction about like stories and forbidden love I think it's just so cool like I like just like going in my book and be like oh I hope I hope they end up together at the end no why would you do this it's like watch <laughs> go but like you're like reading it I'm like I can't I can't wait until like the next like chapter and oh and then like sometimes I can't put the book down but like currently I'm reading a book for my um creative nonfiction class it's called truth and beauty by Anne Patchett also like my mindfulness like things that I do like I like that especially in being university students it's so hard for us to associate reading with pleasure now because we have to read so much for school so I think it's awesome that you have found a way to take that back and make it part of your mindfulness practice and I wonder if other students like students that are listening were intentional and mindful about dedicating part of their day to pleasurable reading. I wonder if that would end up helping them get through, you know, all that textbook reading as well. So that might be something our listeners might want to try. Mine are, mine's kind of like a combination of both of yours. So one of my favorite mindfulness practices is exercise based. So running and it's really strange. So I'm in a sport and exercise psychology grad program program here at Cal State Long Beach. And we, when we talk about exercise psychology, we talk about um, a couple different tactics we can help an exercisers use to get through long runs and, you know, like those really lengthy uh, workouts. And one of them is listening to music and kind of disassociating from the physical feeling the workout and focusing on something different. And it's so interesting because for running, I don't like to listen to music when I run. It's like really weird. I like to get lost in my surroundings. So that's why running on a treadmill and stuff had never really worked for me because you're just in one spot and you're just listening to music and not doing anything. And that never really worked for me. So being able to get outside and in nature and seeing things, I'm very lucky to live here in Long Beach and just go to the beach and go running and see people and you see the ocean and you just kind of get lost in that environment. So that's kind of one of my mindfulness practices. And then my second one that I really like, and I try to practice it more now than before the pandemic is writing to my emotions. So instead of just journaling the whole like, oh, today I'm feeling so-and-so and whatever, I write a letter to my emotions. So like, oh my gosh, like I'm really, really anxious right now. I sit down and I write a letter to my anxiety. So I'm like, dear anxiety, thank you for you know letting me know that I'm feeling overwhelmed right now. I really appreciate you as a signal that I might need to take some time away from work. But right now I could really use a little bit of peace of mind. And so like, I just write a little letter to my, my emotions and that kind of helps me work through the emotions and realize how they benefit me, what I could do to, to not feel them. So that's one of my other mindfulness practices. And the third one, I would say art. So either painting or cross-stitching or embroidering, that's just kind of like the monotonous work. It's kind of like running because it's just like the monotony of running just one foot in front of the other. So I like to do it with art as well. So painting and just getting lost in it. There was a Brene Brown podcast that I listened to and they were talking about mindfulness and, and all that. And in part of the episode, Brene had said something like, oh, 
I don't know if I really could consider this mindfulness, but I really like to swim and it's just, I'm really connected to myself. And I can't remember who the guest was, but the guest was like, that's mindfulness. That's like a source of meditation. So definitely physical activity seems to be pretty high on everyone's mindfulness practice list. I think like also when you brought up swimming, I was like, I don't know how to swim. So <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, I don't know how to swim. But another thing like you could also do a mindfulness of like being present is learning something new. Because when you learn something new, you really have to focus. If, if you're teaching yourself, you got to just like, and also being patient, you learn how to be patient. I think when you teach yourself something new, for example, I, um, I played the guitar and I taught myself because no one in my family is remotely musical, like in like, the music <laughs> world. but I was like, let me just teach myself. So I learned a couple of chords and then I realized like how to be patient and how to be present and how to, they're doing it like this. You got to just like kind of copy them and then like move your fingers on the fret and then like up and down the neck. And yeah, like I've been wanting to learn how to swim because I, I really like like water, but I can't go like into like shallow water because like I just like. I will drown. I can't swim. But I think like also learning something new can be some a part of like mindfulness. Yeah. And definitely learning something new that is heavily body oriented, <laughs> like a new exercise, a new sport, swimming, for instance, because you're totally right. You have to be very aware of where your body is in space when you're learning something like that so that definitely has a huge mind body connection no I agree completely Stephanie with like learning new things for mindfulness because I've been like craving to learn something new but it's just been so hard because I feel like the pandemic and like this atmosphere just doesn't give you time or the space to be like, oh, I want to do something different or I want to do something new. I don't know. I feel like I can't really go outside that much because it's like, I want to protect those and others around me. But then like, I'm always home and in the same space and doing the same things, watching Netflix all the time. So it's like, I don't know. I, if I learn something new outside of school, in my head, like in the back of my mind, I'm like, this is taking away from school. I could be reading. I made the poor decision of taking two heavy writing intensive courses, but it's fine. So it's always like, I want to try something new because that is just so mindful. Like you have to be like super mindful and meticulous with that. But it's just like, it's hard as college students to like learn something new because it takes away from like other things that like are constantly asking for our attention. Yeah. And I, I think that's so, so relatable. I mean, I relate to that, um, having singular identity. And normally we talk about that with athletes, having a singular identity as an athlete and everything you do, every waking moment should be surrounded by like, how can I benefit that part of my identity? And I think that in itself, practicing how to love and take care of other parts of your own identity can be part of mindfulness. So making sure that you're setting enough time outside of schoolwork and, and work work time to take care of you and learn something new and, and really connect that mind and body and understand that all of us are more than just students and just trying to be really mindful of our, our multiple identities because intersectionality is, is so important to embrace for everyone. Like you said, as the university students, we kind of forget. Although you know, it is important. You know, you gotta do your schoolwork, but it's not gonna be. It's not gonna. It's not your entire life. You do have to have a life. I, you have to know how to separate school from your personal life. Like learn how to like do like that boundary, build barriers. Like I, I, I kind of set like myself a rule. Like I try to finish all my schoolwork during the week. And the weekend, I don't even open my laptop. My laptop is foreign to me because I, I, I'm on Zoom every single day. I'm on meetings. I'm answering emails. I don't even use my laptop to like watch Netflix. Like it's, it's off. I don't even open it. And like if I do open it, it's either to like I'm gonna go watch a movie because I deserve that because I've been working hard. I've been working hard this whole semester, and I deserve just to like chill or I turn off all my notifications everything is off because I'm setting that ba that boundary of like no school no work during your personal time because personal time is for you to relax to take some time 
because you deserve it. I think everyone deserves a little break from all the crazy that's going on. Yeah, I totally agree. And it, (laughs) whenever I had worked with um, athletes with uh, my supervised consulting, a lot of them, when we would do goal setting, they would put, set their reward as like rest time. And it's really, really hard for us, I think, in this capitalistic type society to say your reward for doing stuff shouldn't be rest. You should be doing stuff, you should be resting, and then you should also have a reward for doing stuff. Because if you don't rest, you're not going to be able to do things. So I think it's really hard for people to understand that like mindfulness can be a practice and it can be a form of rest, but you shouldn't be withholding yourself from it. Everyone, like you said, Stephanie, everyone deserves to rest no matter how much you are or are not doing in school or, or work or whatever you're doing. Everyone deserves that type of rest. Since we're already kind of talking about it, being students, what our real, real barriers are for practicing mindfulness. I know for me, It is just course load and the amount of stuff that I do have to get done for school and for work for Project Ocean and it being a pandemic. And like Sinead said, we're home all the time, working from home and schooling from home. So that's like the biggest barrier for me is that everything is home now. So like my desk is in my bedroom where I work and I do homework and schoolwork and I'm in classes and and all of that is in in one place. And that's probably the biggest barrier for me. Similar to that, like on top of being home all day, I think one of my biggest barriers is going to be my phone because I'm trying to be mindful. I'm trying to set, I'm trying to set boundaries. Like I'll just put on silent and be like past 8 PM. I'm not texting anyone. And it's really hard for me, especially, I don't know if you all can relate to this, but verbally saying those boundaries, like I'll say it in my head, like I'm not texting anyone back, but when someone's like constantly trying to get a hold of you for something that's so small, that doesn't need attention right now, it's so hard for me to say, hey, I'm setting a boundary. Can we talk tomorrow? I think that's just so hard, especially like with like, oh, I'm, I'm an anxious girl. And it's like, <laughs> I don't want to come off as rude. Like, even though I'm trying to take care of myself, be mindful of my Sunday evenings, you know, it's so hard for me, especially since it's always with me, you know, like even in class, I have my phone right there and it's so easy to just go like, I am pretending I'm texting, but on screen. (laughs) (laughs) So I don't know, like, I wish I could just go to a classroom and throw my phone away. Like, I just want it away. I don't know. It's definitely blocking some mindfulness techniques. (laughs) always surrounded by technology and just constantly having the appearance or facade, I guess it is, that we're available 24-7 now with technology, with laptops and emails and team messages and messenger, Facebook messages on Instagram, text messages. We're always available. I'm putting that in quotes, (laughs) available. So yeah, definitely that's also a barrier for me, Sinead, 100%. I think I agree with all the both of you. I mean, just staying at home. I feel like, because, okay, so putting into context, I still live with my parents. So everyone, I live with my parents, I live with my older brother. So they, everyone goes to work and I'm by myself the whole rest of the day. But I think like when people, when my family thinks like I'm home and they think I have time. If I have time, they think I could like do the chores all around the house. And I'm like, oh no, 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 no. I'm like from meeting to meeting and I got to go meet somebody and I got to go answer emails. And then I have to that, I have to study for my midterms. And then from midterms, I have to do homework. And then I have to do some extra stuff. Like I need some time in there for me to just breathe, just relax like and I I've had this conversation with my mom and I'm like if I think she's starting to understand starting to get it that although I am home although you see me just sitting at home all the time or if one day you go into my room and I'm just lying down it's because I had a hard day I want to just lie down and stare at my ceiling for five minutes before I had to start my other 
my other task i think that's like the biggest barrier it's like people assume you just have so much time on your hands and really i have i feel like i have no time to do anything because like there's not enough hours in the day for me to finish what i wanted to do sometimes i get just so frustrated i just want to like lock my door and be like no one bother me like you gotta understand i'm a student doing alternative learning with professors that sometimes don't get also that you're a student doing alternative learning from home and people assume you have other responsibilities like it's just that's like my biggest barrier and I think a lot of people who do live with with parents or live with other people they can also relate that they just assume you just have all this time in the world and you don't Yes, that is so relatable. I I don't live at home with my parents, but I could imagine living at home, especially since virtual learning is new for so many of us. Unless you've gone to a program that was all online, going to school during this pandemic is new for all of us students. And it's new for everyone that is in our life, our parents, our siblings, our friends that might not be in school right now. It's a new area to kind of get used to and and setting boundaries, kind of like what you mentioned before, setting boundaries is just such a great tool. People not understanding that even though we're at home a good amount of the time, working from home and schooling from home, just because we are at home doesn't mean that it's lesser work. It's almost more work now. I've been so fortunate to have very understanding professors. They understand me like we're all from home and then we have other responsibilities aside from from school but I have heard other stories of students and their professors actually give them more work because they assume that because they're home they have all this time in the world to read a whole thick textbook about I don't know like philosophy I don't know what's the hardest subject right now but like <laughs> something like that something to understand that's like not easy but they're just like you have all this time you stay home here just just read that and make sure you understand it by next class and I'm just like that's insane how do you I barely understand like the first page how do you want me to read 40 chapters of all of this and then expect me to have a discussion with you because that's unrealistic mm-hmm. expectations that some people have on other people yeah Stephanie you just like spoke my life right now I have one of those professors right now and it is rough out here um so that's definitely a barrier in my mindfulness because I can't think about myself and my intentions for the day like most days because I have to read like over 50 pages of a book I can't be mindful because I'm just so anxious and worried about that it's really rough out here and like obviously if your mind's so consumed at school and I don't want like that my whole identity to be a student in school I want to live like you're only 20 once So like the fact that I can't be mindful and living in the moment because I have professors that aren't like understanding is kind of rough. Yeah, that's definitely a barrier for me. I'm glad you brought that up. (laughs) And I think that's really, really relatable. I mean, for so many students, especially those that are in undergrad, I'm a graduate student. So a full load for graduate students is only three classes. But For undergraduates, I think it's like four or five classes is like a full load, right? So having to juggle that many classes and and that much coursework is definitely a huge barrier right now living at home in the pandemic. That kind of brings us to another point. Practicing mindfulness is imperative for our mental and physical health during this pandemic. We just created a TikTok, Project Ocean, and we just posted our first one. And it was me explaining that when my mental health becomes more poor, the space around me starts to reflect that. So not only am I now working from home, living from home and schooling from home, my space around me is starting to look poorer and poorer and be less functional. So now that's affecting my mental health even more and it's affecting all these different areas of my life. So that's why practicing mindfulness is so important for me specifically during this pandemic is because when I am practicing my mindfulness, the space around me is cleaner, it's more organized, it's more functional. And it's really important that it's functional right now since everything is happening at home. I did see the TikTok. I was like, I relate because you can't can see my room right now, but it's a whole mess. And I was trying to clean on the weekend. I finally got my desk because like it's my desk. And then I have like a little drawer right next to it. It was a whole mess of like papers and mail and like 
junk like, drawer. <laughs> that's my junk drawer. So I was like, you know what? I, I have like five minutes. I blasted music and I'm like, I'm going to clean this drawer. And if it's the only thing I clean, it's going to be satisfying because I can finally open it without getting stuck. You know how like when you have a junk drawer and it can't open because it's like stuck with so much stuff that you just like, and I'm like, wow, I've gotten like mail and things from like high school. Like I graduated high school <laughs> years ago. <laughs> Why am I still having this? Like, what is what is all of this? But I finally got like got it cleaned. I threw everything away. But like I can relate when I'm having like going through like either my depressive episodes or I have my anxiety. It's just like at its peak. I I just start not to care. Not only like in my personal life, but also in like my school. I start to start to dis- disassociate. Like, I don't want to talk to anybody. And that's when I know I'm not being mindful. I'm not taking care of myself. Because mm-hmm. the things the things that I used to enjoy are not doing it for me anymore. That's when I'm like, okay, okay, Stephanie, you need to, like, be present. And I have a really hard time being present because I, like, my anxiety does not let me. I, I'm thinking about things, like, in the future. I was thinking about, you know, I'm a free social work major, so I'm always worrying that if I don't get into the social work program, you know, one step at a time, you mm-hmm. still just turned in your application, you're good. You you won't know until another month and that's okay. If you don't get in, so be it. We'll, we'll deal with that later. But right now, just be happy that you turned it in, you tried your best and whatever happens, happens. So that's like my mind not letting me be present and live live my life. And that's obviously affecting all these other stuff around me like both in school and then like in personal life, like my messy bedroom. That's so funny you bring that up, Stephanie. Like, oh, like I'm not going to get in. What will happen? I'm constantly thinking like that. My anxiety just doesn't let me sit down and have a moment for myself, especially when there's deadlines or applications involved. So I definitely related to that. And so I think you definitely handle it in a wonderful way to say, well, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Like, if I don't get in, we'll figure that out later. But for now, we're chilling and we're hanging out. And that's definitely what I need to tell myself sometimes. <laughs> it's hard because you like you say in your mind, but are you actually doing it? I think you're going to like put it to the test. Like, are you actually doing what you're saying? That's great point is when we say that we're going to be mindful. I do that all the time. I'm like, okay, like, I'm just not going to, I'm not going to think about it right now. I'm in the present moment. I have X, Y, and Z to get done now. I'm not going to worry about what's going to happen three months from now. And I think that like a lot of people can relate to that. We always say and claim, I'm going to be mindful. I'm going to do this. But what's making us actually practice that? Something that I thought was really cool that we did for Project Ocean when we came back for the semester is that we set intentions. One of my intentions for this semester was to be open to opportunities and staying present in the moment with those opportunities. And I have it written down like on my desk. It's like I'm seeing it every day and I try my best to not only read it, but I also try to say it out loud because I think there's a lot to be said about having an intention and then verbalizing it out loud to yourself and also telling other people about it so that they can hold you accountable. I think like also what we did for Beach Buddies was we also did that at the beginning of um, this semester. I know we wrote down like our goals and our intentions, what we want to do. Because being in the mental health field, I think we tend to tell people what like not what to do, but like suggest people what to do. And we don't like we don't do it ourselves we don't do what we preach we were talking about in one of our trainings and it was and we it is it is very true we get to um we rather help others than help ourselves because you rather see others be happy because you want to you don't want them to feel what you're feeling oh my gosh i feel that i'm like that's so true because i rather someone be happy than me being happy for myself when you're happy you kind of just like release those energies those vibes and then other will be mm-hmm. happy like with you you mm-hmm. don't have to make other people happy and then you're just all sad and depressed and like feeling awful yeah our our supervisor jen she always says you can't pour from an empty cup and we say that in our qpr trainings as well because you can't you can't pour from an empty cup and if you want to refill others you have to refill yourself and i think being intentional about setting some mindfulness practices is a great start to to fill your own cup so we can continue filling other people's cups. Wow, we discussed so much and this was a great conversation and I don't know about y'all but it makes me want to 
set aside some very specific time today to practice my own mindfulness because like Stephanie said, I want to make sure that I'm practicing what I'm preaching. So thank you again, Stephanie, for joining us. This was seriously so fun. I loved our conversation and I hope our listeners enjoyed it too. And they they feel less alone listening to this because mindfulness is hard to practice. It just is, especially during a pandemic. So everyone just know you're not alone. We're also struggling. And Stephanie, how can people find you, your podcast, Beach Buddies? Okay, first of all, thank you so much for having me. I think it was so fun. This is our first collaboration and podcast for Beach Buddies and Project Ocean. I hope I get invited to come back again or you guys come to my podcast and we'll have a whole conversation there but you can find me and the rest of the beach buddies and our podcast as on instagram as csu of the beach buddies um all of our podcasts are posted there we currently just came out with our sixth episode and i talk about um being an ally for the lgbt community how does that look like and um some strategies that you you can use um for the LGBT community. So 